Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here, coming to you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark Watch for you guys today. And we have a lot of finals to go over and a lot of cards you guys should be looking at. So if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to smash that like button, see if we can get to 75 likes. We also hit 2100 subscribers, even though 33% of people who watch my videos are unsubscribed. So hopefully today's day I earned that subscription from those who are not subscribed. Remember, it is free, at least for now. Also, if you're buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my affiliate link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to no additional cost you. Let me know what I'm looking at in the next market watch, or if you guys want me to go over anything, let me know in the comment section below. And I want to say thank you to all my YouTube channel members. I want to say thank you to my first one. Notice me, Senpai Thomas Uwu. Well, you're noticed. I've literally saw your name for three weeks. I was like, I cannot wait till March starts to say that on camera. Edgar Medina, Carlin Lenker Frisk, uh, Rajita Nobles, The Lone Descendant, Mr. Blanks, Yami Dami, uh, Danny, uh, what's it called? Fernando Polito, Seto Kaiba's bank account, Drew Chamberlain, Shoelace Bandit, and the Harv Card Man. Thank you guys all so much for being YouTube channel members. I really do appreciate it. Uh, the support really does mean a lot, especially with how bad the economy is. And, you know, moving out and getting product for you guys for the channel. I got something in yesterday. I might post it. I might not. I'm not too sure. But guys, next subscriber special, it's going to be epic. But Anyway, Borderlord Savage Dragon from Savage Strike. Now, I told people to get these at $20, $25 because history is going to repeat itself. It's going to hit 80 Well, it kind of did because you have one year mid tier for 51 75 And then I don't think anyone's going to buy this. These two copies. Like, good luck selling yours at $325. Uh, really, good luck. Uh, but $175 here. Uh, yeah, this card's essentially bought out. Um... A lot of decks that no matter what can have access to this card because it's a generic interrupt, right? And all you really have to do is have a Link Monster in the Grave, and that's it. Uh, really, really good card overall. Uh, the Secret Rares, though, are 24 listings, so they're kind of approaching there. But they're $50, going up to $54.55. Uh, I'll tell you this, I'm glad I told people to grab the Secret Rares at 10 I told people to grab the Secret Rares first because they look better. But then once I saw the Ultras on the trend of 2025, I was like, nope, history is going to repeat itself. The Ultras are going to hit the moon. Get those instead. But hey, no matter what you got, you made a lot of money here. Uh, Beatdown from Show Jump Magazine Promos. Now, in my five cards out of your trade binder, I actually talked about this card and saying, hey, you guys should be get grabbing this at $9. Well, right now, you have them at about $19 from 200 sales. But after that, you know, if you're looking for someone who has at least has a thousand sales, you're paying about forty bucks right here. Uh, you do got some che uh, a cheaper mob play here for ten if you want to try to grab that. But I would rather just grab the near mints. But you are paying a little bit of money for this. Nine was good, but hey, eighteen's not nineteen twenty is not that terrible either. Uh, Dragon Maid Welcome for Mystic Fires. Now a lot of people said, hey. This card should be this much money. I mean, they're $9, and they should be. But the issue with Dragon Maids and a lot of decks, like, let's look at Medulce as well. Dragon Maids and Medulce have this in common. Uh, they're very they're fan-favorite archetypes that a lot of people want to play, and a lot of people want to play now. So, peop when we get the reprints for Dragon Maids or Medulce's or whatever, people are going to be like, oh, cool, let me grab the reprints, right? So, they pay whatever, they get whatever's reprinted. And then they're like, oh, great, now that I have some of the deck done, I can buy the rest, right? So the cards that did get reprinted go up, right? This card should be worth this price, of course, but this is one of the last cards that got, uh, that doesn't have a reprint, right? So as Konami keeps reprinting these cards, right, people are going to be like, oh, well, what cards are reprinted are going to go up and up and up. So you're really not, you're still paying the, around roughly the same price of a deck. Maybe you're paying like, 20% less, but you have to wait a while, all that, and you're not even getting max rarity either, so, yeah, this is what you're paying right now, uh, look through your bulk, and just see if you have this, because it is, it was literally a bulk card of 20 cents for maybe about, maybe it went to a dollar within a year, but not much here, Lorepar, another card that needs a reprint, uh, you're looking at about 14, 15 dollars here, Topia Lugama at 3, 4, if you listen, well, good job. Uh, Parlor Dragon Maid. Now, this was a dollar, right, out of Maximum Gold. Well, you see him here about 350 365 here. Okay, that's cool, right? Well, at, you know, you see a lot of unverified there. You go to the next page, they're about $6 here. And then next page, they're about 7s right over here. And remember, 
There's a, quite a few unverified here. Like you go to the first page, one, two, three, four, five, right there, six, seven, right? So there's really only, if we click verified sellers right here, right? Uh, it bought, per, there's not really many on the market here. You know, there's barely two pages. So this card may not look like it's bought out, but it is getting bought out here. So if you have any of these or you can get them for cheaper or you want to grab those cheaper copies for $3, that's not bad. Now, Kitchen, I told you guys to grab about three and a half, four dollars $4 in my last five cards that you have to have in your trade buyer. Not the March one, but the February one, right? I told you guys three and a half, four dollars $4 is what you guys should be paying. Well, they're basically after, you know, because of the shippings over here, they're basically six bucks, six thirty, dollars uh, going up to six fifty dollars here. Uh, going up all the way to seven here. Remember when we click verified here, they basically bought out about seven bucks right here, going up to eight, nine dollars. So, and remember, people are gonna want three copies of this, right? First page. I mean, you have one wall here, but it's not gonna last very long. So, if you got these at three and a half, four dollars, I'm not telling you to sell them. Just keep an eye on this card because they're gonna hit seven, eight, nine dollars real quick, just like Parlor World. Now, Nurse Dragon Maid has yet to reach that. Because I think you'll have to play one or two copies of this. Uh, they're about roughly two two fifty here, right? You guys saw the rest of the cards. Once they get bought out, this is gonna get bought out next. So if you don't have Nurse Dragon made, I would start getting these copies. But the reason why this is also lower is I think people are waiting for the Lost Art, which I honestly cannot wait for. I think it's gonna look phenomenal. Now House Dragon made here secret rares. I've also noticed on a bit of a big trend here. I mean three. 46 four dollars here again card used to be bulk going up to five now you do have the maximum gold uh version here but that has 32 listings as well and these are not much really really inexpensive here like dollar 60 you got well for like dollar 40 but they're going up to about four four or five bucks themselves really like once we click verified here like, let's click verify and see where this goes. Yeah, five bucks right here. So, you guys might want to grab your copies over here as well. Uh, because there's quite a few until they get uh, bought out. Now, I know I have quite a few because I kept all my bulk for Maximum Gold. And a lot of people, believe it or not, when they gave me their bulk, you know, and I bought it, a lot of them had a lot of quarter ship for Maximum Gold. And I was like, all right, I'm very glad I got this. One day it's going to go up. Now, this is way faster than I thought. But, uh... Hey, I guess I went faster. Archfiend Eccentric here. Now, I talked about this card being very generic and very good because it's a Pendulum Skill 7, so it's not bad overall, right? It gives you a lot to work with. Uh, the Pendulum Effect is you target a Spell or Trap on the field and destroy both uh, this and that card. Really good to get over certain uh, FUD gates, right? Especially with Skill Drain at 3 being played. Monster Effect... You basically tribute to destroy it, right? So basically, this is a card that you essentially keep trading for other cards on your opponent's side of the field. I thought it was pretty good generic spell trap removal for pendulums. And being an original for Class Rebellions, I told people to get these at 4 or 5 bucks, right? Now, if you did, well, they're $19 right over here. So congratulations, you made some money. If you want to go ahead and sell this card, if you're not using it, go ahead. But I still think it's a pretty good overall card. Now, the other versions, I told people not really to grab. And yeah, like $1.25. I mean, the card's accessible if you need it. Uh, Araya, Lord of the Searing Flames. Though, I saw this on my live stream, right? And I was like, what type of crackheadedness is this? Uh, they're $2 now, but they were about 5 bucks here. And they go up to 5 But it's calming down because people realize that this is a really idiotic buyout. Uh... Yeah, I mean, people you actually bought them for five bucks. That's yeah, people were actually buying them for like three, four ish, maybe four dollars here. Uh, this was pretty ridiculous, actually. Like, these dollars is what they should be going for, right? If you have this card, just sell it immediately, right? Uh, Araya Lord of the String Flames from the 2006 Megaton. Now, this card has the old OG secret for you link, so that's really cool. Not that this version doesn't look dope, this version looks very awesome, right? But collectors are going to want this one. And it's a tin, so it's a lot more rare. Well, how much are these? Right, you might be thinking. Well, let's go light play. Light play, three and a half, four dollars. It the, the other version has no business being above two dollars, right? You want if two dollars, sure, right? Okay, I'm not going to play too much, right? But no more than that, because if it goes to three, three forty nine for an OG version, four dollars. 
for you know five bucks here for lightly played so near mints i know are going to be a pretty penny because getting these tin versions in near mint is rare not only because they're old but the packaging uh it wasn't the best and when you get the card usually it's lp right out of the gate or the centering's off or something like i know a lot of people know what i'm talking about here about 10 to 12 bucks here for near mints just grab the light play i'd rather have three lps than a near mint of this uh shout out to infinity ultra rares uh, I want to see how much these were. I mean, you could get, uh, you know, a mod play on the mid for $3. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Let's, uh, let's look at light plays in their mints here. Uh, lightly plays are about, I mean, no name seller for three fifty there. Uh, six, seven bucks in their mints are eight forty eight. So very good for rituals, actually. Now, first, it's going to break my ass a little bit. 15 for LP. Uh, 28 for near mint. Okay, you know what? I think that's very fair for Uriah Searing Flames. Uh, there's not too many cheaper copies before 20 left either. So if you want to grab an LP or two, if you're like an old school collector, that's fine. But if you just want it because it looks cool and you think it's awesome, just grab two or three of the LPs over here. Uh, but you know, if you're an old school collector, you want to get your OG print for something fair because I know there's the ulti here. You're going to show me the ulti. You're not going to show me the ulti. Uh, let's take a look at the ulti because I haven't looked at this in a while. Uh, first I'd like plays are, you know, I, I just want to see what all the listings here. So damaged, ridiculous, uh, mob play from a no-name seller for $600. Okay, uh, see how LP's 3500 that's not too bad. Heavy play sold at 439 this year, ridiculous. Mm. Like... Man, I wish I could get my hands on some first set Shadows of Infinity. That'd be dope, you know. Tour Guide from the Underworld. Extreme Victory. Uh, first editions here. I really only care about first set. Uh, Lightly played are about $76. Okay, sure, that's going up to 80 That's not too bad here. Near Mints are about... About $104 for your Tour Guides. I mean, people... I mean, the, the card, you know, always played in BA... Played in older formats, an iconic card in the game. I'm not shocked that's this value. No. Oh, did I pull up ultis? Wow, that's that's criminal. I did not pull up ultimate rares. Don't worry, guys. I got it. Ultis are 378 for light play, 405 for near mints. Now, I could have got a place of Portuguese uh for eight hundred dollars. Uh, if I want it, but I was like, you know what, I, I know I'm not going to be happy with it, and then I'm going to have to get rid of it, and for $800, you know, I make 100 bucks on it, just not worth, uh, I, this card just looks so beautiful, I'm so glad I have one copy, because this is actually one of my top, like, 10 or 15 favorite cards, I just love this card, I don't know why, I just love the artwork, uh, alternate arts, I don't like these as much, they don't look bad, I just don't care about it. Uh, these are about $3. I remember when these were like $0.75. Cents, I told people to pick them up as a penny stock. Maximum Gold. These were quarters. Told people to pick these up $3. Right? Uh, other versions as well. Before we go to Mardell over here. Uh, you know, the Commons. You know. Or some. Don't we have a... We have an alternate art of the... Of this one. Yeah. Gold is from... Maximum, you know, dollar two fifty here. Tour guides always worth some money, no matter what. Mardell, generate boss of light. It's summoned. You add a generate or a plant monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, really good overall, especially because it's level. It's so it's level nine. Uh, it, unfortunately, if it was level eight, like a lot of plant decks have synergy with level eight cards. So I kind of wish this was a level eight, although it's a level nine because it was supposed to be a generator card, but. They add plant to make it generic, which is actually quite nice. Uh, card is good overall. You could loan fire it out for a search, right? Overall, pretty okay, good card. 25 for near mints. I hope this uh, card is due for a reprint, though. Uh, if you have any extra copies or you're not using it, I would sell this because I think it's going to get a reprint eventually. Maybe it goes to the past. Who knows? I'm really I'm really interested to see what they put on that list. Loan fires from Champion Pack 7 here. Uh... 270 man i told people to get these at 75 80 dollars if you did you would have made some big cash uh i also told people to get deep sea diva deep sea diva here 
Okay, so these are bought out as well. Uh, these are 135 for Nirmen. So I told people to grab them at $55, $60. Um, as you guys see here, you know, if we scroll down, they're about, you know, 60 something. Uh, selling for 85 is so a little bit over there as well. Uh, definitely went up in the last three months. I mean, six months here when I mentioned it. If you got this, good job because high rarity deep sea diva is always going to be worth quite a bit of money. Uh, I these could go up to two hundred. Honestly, I feel like people will still buy this at this price. So if you have these and you're not in a rush to get rid of them, you doubled your money. But I think it could go higher. Uh, OTS eighteen. We'll have to go over this. One hundred fifty seven fusion destiny. Okay, Ecclesia's one twenty six, one twenty seven. Zeus is about a straight 100. A lot of more people are looking for Zeus, which is funny. I don't know why it, it's less than these other two listings. Sorry, guys. I'm really thirsty today. Uh, Dashers are about... Let's see here. 10, 11 bucks, 12 bucks here, and they're selling, right? Not shot that Dashers is a $10 card, but hey. $10 for a super is way better than $20 to $25. Uh, for a, like, light play, maybe near mint, common. So, baby sources are 6 as they should be. Token collectors are $6. People are really happy with this card, honestly. I think it was a good reprint, but again, I'm okay with this maybe getting a super rare because maybe Sneak Peek won't count as a high rarity, but because, you know, it's so unaccessible that I kind of, you know, it's okay to bend that rule, but still, I don't know. Monks for fours. Dollar on token, twos on that. Contact C, very cheap. Get your contact Cs. Uh, you got your... Yeah, I expect that to be worth it. Monjuzar, dollar eighty-nine. You got free dollar common here. Another dollar common. I don't know if that sells, but, you know, because it's OTS comments are always inflated, but I get why Monjuz some money here. Uh, and yeah, overall, this sets... It's money. Uh, Chaos Space... Uh, I would also I would probably say that everything is priced the way I expected it to be. To be honest with you, here I feel like the only thing that's a little inflated is maybe token collector, right? Maybe mm, amongst pl played right now, so I can't really say so. Uh, yeah, I would say everything in here is basically fine. Chaos space. I told people to get these at eight to ten dollars. Well, now they're for first editions because you know there's barely any difference here. You have one here for seven bucks. Okay. 17, 18. I mean, I bet that guy's offline, but hey, I would grab that copy. Very, very cheap. Uh, and you know, these could go up to 25, 30. I'm glad I kept the place up for myself. I'll tell you that. A Luber's here. I told people these were gonna hit a hundred. Well, now they're about eighty-eight dollars. Tony, I know you're watching, Tony. I'ma say I won. You said just get rid of them at 70. I knew it. Ah. Don Amachi booster box is here. About $60, give or take. Well, the Starlights here basically aren't that good. I mean, you have two that... I mean, at least if you get a Starlight like these two, you're like, I think that's not a bad Starlight to grab. This isn't good, but it's worth money still, which is really odd. But at least you could sell it. Uh, you got stars, but these two, you know, this sucks. This is terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Allergies suck, but you got Condom Fusion. You got uh, Stardust Synchron. You got, you know, the set's not good. Like, if you put money into it, you're probably not make you're not going to make it back. But if you want to gamble for a Luber, I mean, hey, you get some bulk. You get some other good monies. You got, you got the 2 $3 super to kind of help you if you get the brand of Fusion, right? So not too bad. Like, if this car, if this set had one more realistic, like, secret, or that, like, let's say, like, if Condom Fusion was, like, $40, right? $40, right? And maybe it had a little more help, I would say go grab this for $60. But I, I don't think, I, I mean, I think it's good to have the seal no matter what, so get your seal. But I can't say it's worth cracking open, per se. Now, Baron de Fleur, and I want to talk to, about Baron de Fleur and DP really quickly. So Baron de Fleur, 101 here, going to about 106, 110 here. Uh, I mean, it's matter relevant, Sword Soul, obvious. DPE here is about $90, going up to about 95 So it's about a $95 card, understandable. I think it should have hit 100 at this point. The card's broken. Honestly, 
yes, we have ways to deal with it, but you if you don't have it immediately, it's like drawing the out in a way. Now, I play Omega in the side. Uh, not in the side, but in the extra deck with my Dark Magic package. So it's really close, but when I dump Omega, once DP activates its effect, I could just activate uh, more. Whenever this hits the grave, it doesn't matter if it activates the effect. Or not. I could just activate Omega and shuffle it right back, and it's really nice because then they also have a dead... Unless they play two DPs, then I just slam my hand in the ground. But they should have a dead card in the deck as well if they draw it. So they could top deck something that's useless. Uh, but uh, Guilty Gear Freak, the Magical Steel Knight, is a super poly target when they have both of these. So you super poly this, they can't respond, right? So you get rid of the DPE, right? Very valuable. You get rid of the Baron, right? So you get rid of two interrupts. DP can't come back. You have a, And you have a monster on board, right? And you use one card to get all that, right? So once we're told when a card effect is activated, the target's this card. You can negate the effect, destroy uh, one card in the field. Uh, no, it's not that great because it has to target this. If your opponent just reads it, they're not going to target this, right? Uh, well, unless, well, the only good thing, the saving grace about this is when a card or effect is activated, that targets this card, right? So if you target with something and you negate your own thing, you can just pop a card on the field, right? So, I guess it's somewhat usable, but like, eh, because it does say destroy that card, so it's destroy a card on the field, right? Very important that says this. Now, if this card was fusion summoned, uh, uh, using only monsters on the field as a material, it could make a second attack during each battle phase. So, double attack to 2700. If you battle a post monster, you could banish your spell card from your graveyard. This card gains attack equal to half its current defense. So, it gains 800, so it's really 35. It's until the end of this turn, so you get both attacks with a 3500 real in reality. I I think this is the CR, mind you, $23, dollars It's also a collectible CR from King's Court. I'm not telling you guys to go crazy over, but I would buy this card. Ultras told you guys the guy bet this about buck fifty two dollars. Did go up to three four dollars for a bit, but now it's back at two dollars. Unfortunate, but hey, if you want to get the cheap version for your super Bowl, it's like. If you're not playing meta right now, and you're like, huh, I still like to play the tournaments, do all that. Honestly, what I would suggest you guys do is is play, like, a copy two of this. And maybe, probably, like, one copy. Then play Super Poly with, like, another Super Poly target. I really think that Super Poly is very underestimated in this format. That's my honest opinion. But, you do have to activate it first, and a lot of decks lock you in, like, Dog Maca package. I love playing Medulce, so Medulce kind of locks you in. Dark, uh, the Dark Charmer. Also, if you guys have not hit that like button, I have no clue what you're doing. Let's get to 75 likes here. Uh, Starlight Rares are about 285, as they should be. I just wish I got for 200, but hey, I told you guys to grab it too soon, I guess. Uh, Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, I told people to grab this at about 110. They're about 120 now. 121, 124. Card could go up to 150. I think by the end of the year, this card's going to be at least, like, close to 200. Uh, Dinomorphia Theresa here. So, I at about 95, this was a gamble here. 107, right? 110. So, if you got a play set, you made a little bit of money so far. You know, nothing crazy. Now, I know I don't want to really go over this card, but this card looks so awesome. Uh, I plan, this is going to be what I make with tokens, all right? I, I have mine from Battles of Chaos. I think I have two copies, right? So, if the card switch will summon you target two face up monsters on the field, make one of those monsters attack equal to the other monsters attack. Uh, right? So, basically, when this is summoned, you target the highest monster in one of your monsters and it gains that attack. Uh, level 8 or higher dogmatic monsters to control cannot be destroyed by battle. Uh, not really useful, but, you know, I guess it's some type of protection. The monster is a special summon from your post extra deck. You can look at your post extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard. So, hey, if they summon something and they're doing their combo, it's, I don't think this card's terrible, personally. Like, in because it is a ritual, right? So, you know, you could do all your dogmatic stuff to get to this. If You, you could summon this in defense, right? Uh, once you make your play, you make one of your uh, monsters way stronger than it should be, right? So you have a pretty big beat stick. And then, this isn't not necessarily an interrupt, but let's pretend you're going against, uh, let's say, you know, Dragon Link, right? Or you're going against, you know, any deck, you could take the DPE out of their deck. You could take the Baron out of their deck, right? Really, really good there, right? Oh, you know their combo, they need to go into this? Take it out, right? 
I think this card is actually really good this format. And I kind of want to play around with Super Poly and like pure Dogmatica. As weird as that might sound. I just have confidence. It's probably really bad, but hey, it'll be fun. Dark Magician here. Uh, 158, 160, 165 here. I don't really have anything to say about this. Chaos Hunter. Your opponent's special is a monster. You can discard a card to special this card from your hand, and then your opponent cannot remove cards from play. Now, Lancing is really good in this format. This card could also be good in this format. Now, it does discard, which could be a blessing or a curse, but... Let's see, you have Lightly Plate and Lemonade for 15, 15 bucks right there. 16 for Near Mints. Okay. First Eds, Lightly Plates, 35. Near Mints, ah, 35. Okay, basically you're going to get Near Mints for 35. Not a bad card, and I've been siding Lancia in. Uh, especially against, uh, like, a lot of decks like um, Phantom Knights. I've been, uh, you know, doing against, like, Sword Soul type-esque decks. Desk, uh, eh, decks. I was about to say desks, I don't know why. Uh, but... Card's not that is pretty good. Like shotgun it, I've been having a lot of success. So I think this card could be really good as well. Right? Uh I mean they could get rid of it, but eh, it's twenty five hundred, you know. If it stops or plays, it stops or plays. If you guys enjoyed this smart watch, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe over here. Uh buying any cards of TCG player, please use my full link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to no additional cost. So let me know what I'm going over in the next Mark Watch, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I will be doing the token video very, very soon, guys. Uh, I'm looking up videos on it probably today or tomorrow to make sure I'm going to do it right. And probably not this upcoming week, but the next week after that, I plan on doing it. Because this next week, uh, me and my fiance have actually been looking at places to move in, even though the market's awful. And I really told her I don't want to, but she wants to look, I'll, I'll feed her interest. I know I'm going to get my way at the end of it, but good old, uh, but you know, I've been very busy with that waiting list and all that. So your boy's been busy, but he still always finds time to give you guys those clean YouTube uploads. So hopefully you guys appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, live stream tomorrow, probably around 9 30, 10, uh, instead of Tuesday. So be there, be square.